So if you're here, you want to be in the world of environmental science and sustainability, but you don't want to be broke. And contrary to popular belief, there is actually some jobs that will pay you really well in the world of environmental science. And today I'm gonna to be talking about those jobs. Before I start, this list isn't necessarily an end all be all for every high paying job within the world of environmental science, but these are the most prevalent options out there and tend to be the most popular options. So I'm gonna be focusing on these eight. I'm gonna be going through the lowest of the eight that I found going up to the highest at the end. So make sure you watch till the end of this video. Also wanted to mention that a lot of these jobs are kind of geared towards the United States. However, similar jobs like this do exist in other parts of the world. Just take this with a grain of salt. So number eight on our list of high paying jobs, environmental science is an urban planner or regional planner within a city. So urban planners are responsible for creating and designing projects for different cities or regions. So urban planners are very involved in the community of a city and they're often on boards to meet with local stakeholders and stakeholders within the government. And they're often talking with all of these stakeholders to get a good grasp on what kinds of things are needed or what kinds of things would work work well in new designs for city projects. So they work with a lot of people to develop short-term and long-term goals for the city. And as an area grows or changes, planners help communities manage the related economic, social, and environmental issues, such as planning new parks, sheltering the homeless, and making the region more attractive to businesses. So the education for this type of position is typically at a master's level for the entry-level positions in this field. And the growth and job outlook for this job is really incredible. It's actually 11% from the years 2019 to 2029. So a really fantastic option that is on the rise in many cities. The average median salary for urban planners at this point in time is $74,350. So number seven on our list is a lead accredited architect or design professional. So LEED stands for Leadership in Energy and Environmental Design, and the US Green Building Council came up with this um, creation to provide some sort of standard for sustainability in construction and engineering. So many professionals involved in the construction and engineering process can get a LEED accreditation to help them become more sustainable and show that they are able to really create some sustainable structures. But I wanted to focus on architects for this position because they fall into to the next scale for pay here in number seven. So architects do some really cool things. They meet with clients to determine objectives and requirements related to a specific structure that they're supposed to create. And then they're involved in this really cool process of creating a vision for what this new piece of architecture is going to look like. So it's a really creative kind of field. And there's a lot of really cool things you can do with making it more environmentally friendly as we are learning more and more ways to create more environmentally friendly structures. So the education for an architect that is LEED certified or you don't really need a LEED certification, although it can increase your pay scale. Normally you have a bachelor's at most entry level positions in this field. The LEED certification is something that you can get afterwards and can potentially raise your pay. And as of now, the average medium salary for an architect in the United States is $80,750 and the growth is actually quite low compared to other um, industries, other job positions right now, it's only at 1%. So something to note if you are considering pursuing this profession. Number six on our list is a hydrologist. So a hydrologist is basically someone that studies water. So they study water availability and quantity. So this is a really sciencey kind of job where you're involved in a lot of the data collection, the data management, data analysis, and then the interpretation of that data to try to make it into a digestible format to people that are not experts. So hydrologists are often employed by government agencies and also private corporations. And the education level for this 
type of job is often a bachelor's, although some jobs will require a master's. It just depends on the level of complexity that the a specific job entails. Hydrologists can also work with a university and be a very formal kind of a researcher where they are also a professor and for that type of job you would need a PhD. So projected growth for a hydrologist right now is around 5%, so a little bit higher than average, and average median salary according to the Bureau of Labor Statistics is $81,270. So number five in our list is an environmental engineer. So I know a bit about this profession because I was an environmental engineering major for one moment at my university and environmental engineers do some really cool things. They are advising government and private companies on the best ways to minimize the environmental impact of project structures and buildings. So examples of things that envir an environmental engineer might work on are recycling programs, wastewater treatment, or a waste management facility. They also could be working on solar power or wind power. A lot of people also don't realize that an environmental engineer really needs to understand and be very comfortable with math and physics. These kind of come first, primary, before understanding the environment. Um, it's definitely very, very important to be comfortable with these topics when you're working with really um, kind of high stakes structures, kind of very large things like a windmill that could possibly fall over and hurt someone if <laughs> it's not properly constructed. So physics and math, very important. And then comes the environmental um, education. So education level for this type of job is typically just a bachelor's, although some people will go on to do a master's if they want a little bit more specialization. Growth for this type of job is around 3% right now, which is about average. And the pay for this type of job, average median salary right now is $88,860. So number four on our list is a geoscientist, and a geoscientist is a scientist that studies the earth structure and composition. So this is another very sciencey kind of position and is often employed by oil and gas companies. So definitely something to think about if you are, um, if that kind of goes against your morals, although it's probably very important to have people that are very environmentally conscious in this type of position. So a lot of the things that geoscientists will do is collecting data and analyzing it back in a lab. So they could be collecting data by going into the field, taking samples, bringing that back to the lab, or they could be working with aerial photography or satellite images to work out where specific structures or where specific compositions lie. Typical education for this type of career is usually a bachelor's. Um, some jobs might require a master's, like the hydrologist position. If it is a very complex project, um, it might require a bit more expertise. So projected growth for a geoscientist is around 5% for the next 10 years and the average median salary is $92,040. So next up on our list is an environmental lawyer. So when groups or individuals believe someone has misused or abused natural resources to the extent that it has endangered people, wildlife, or the resources themselves, they hire environmental lawyers to plead their cases. So environmental lawyers know the ins and outs of environmental policy and law. So they may be helping clients on issues related to air and water quality, hazardous waste, sustainability, or maybe endangered species. So environmental lawyers might be working for the local, state, or federal government, or they could be working for private or nonprofit organizations. So government agencies like the Department of Energy, the Environmental Protection Agency, and state departments of environmental protection often hire environmental lawyers, and many large corporations will also hire env environmental lawyers. So this is where it gets really important that we have people that truly will fight for the right things because man, we need someone to keep those major corporations in check. <laughs> 
So education for an environmental lawyer is definitely going to be a bachelor's and then a juris doctor to get your law degree. And then oftentimes, if you are specializing in environmental law, you need a specialization degree afterwards. So this is like a master's of law, but the most important thing is that you have a lot of familiarity with environmental law and policy. So growth for this profession, I couldn't find anything specifically for environmental lawyers, but growth of lawyers overall is around 4%. An average median salary for environmental lawyers is $119,250. So number two on our list is a university full professor. So a university full professor is to a few steps up on the uh, food chain of professors in a university. Um, typically, people will enter a university as an assistant professor, and then they'll move up to associate, and then eventually a full professor. I wanted to mention the full professor because we're talking about high paying jobs here. So I skipped over the entry level positions. Um, so important to know. So a university professor is typically going to have a balance of working with students and also working with their own work and projects and research. So usually a full professor will have a few grad students under them and they will be guiding them, acting as a mentor for them. They'll also be working with a lot of undergrads. Um, typically full professors are also um, teachers, instructors at a university teaching some course that relates to their specialty. And they're also at the same time doing their own research. So they could be doing all kinds of different things, going into the field a specific time of the year and collecting data, um, coming back to the university, processing that data and applying for grants and going to conferences to talk about that data with other scientists. So education for a full university professor is very typically a doctorate level degree, a PhD. Sometimes, very occasionally, you'll have a professor position that only requires a master's, although if you want to go the full route to the highest paid opportunity within the world of academia, it's definitely the best idea to have a PhD. So I couldn't find any specific statistics about the growth of a full professor profession. That's very specific role, but I could find um, some information about post-secondary teachers in general, which is colleges, universities, above high school. Um, and the rate is really high for this profession. It's actually 9%, so something to take into account when thinking about all of these jobs. And so as far as the salary for a full professor, I did a lot of research to make sure this was accurate, but according to the latest AAUP report, the average median salary for full professors across all institutions is $136,506. Okay, so the last job, the highest paying environmental science job of all of the ones that I've mentioned, this one is really interesting. The Chief Sustainability Officer. So this is kind of a new upcoming job and I never even heard of it before, before um, going into the research for this video, but it's really cool. So the Chief Sustainability Officer is one of the top executives in a corporation. So you might have heard of a CSO or a CEO, Chief Executive Officer. These are top executives in a corporation or business. So as the world is becoming very slightly more green, conscious, and sustainable, hopefully that's been the trend, um, these jobs have started to pop up where now there is space on a top executive table for a chief sustainability officer. So like other top executives in a business or corporation, chief sustainability officers are very involved in the overarching, very large coordination of projects for a business's environmental and sustainability efforts. So chief sustainability officers are responsible for providing an ongoing evaluation of the company's profits, personnel, ecological outlook, and other factors that affect companies' performance. 
So this is a very business focused kind of environmental job and you definitely need to be very business savvy and very leaderly to have this kind of role. Um, it's definitely not as environmentally focused as the other careers mentioned, but it's the most profitable um, likely because it's so related to business. So there aren't many jobs out there that uh, have this sort of title. This is a very new kind of job and the highest paying jobs are definitely going to be the larger businesses. But in the future, as there becomes more pressure to, to become more green and sustainable, hopefully more positions like this will continue to pop up in the future. Education for this type of position is typically a business or environmental related field. However, I would not recommend just a business degree for this type of position because I feel like it's really important to understand thoroughly environmental principles before um, jumping into a job like this. I would just hate to see someone that's a chief sustainability officer that only has a background in business and doesn't thoroughly understand environmental principles. But that's just my opinion. <laughs> The growth for this specific type of job, I don't have any statistics to help give a real concrete number for that. I just know that it's increasing in popularity as I was doing research for this video, it just kept coming up as number one high paying job within the world of environmental science and everyone agrees that they're on the rise. So as far as the salary for this type of position, it's definitely very nice compared to all of the other ones mentioned in this video at $184,460 according to the Bureau of Labor Statistics for other top executives in the um, country of the United States. So, wow, $184,000 is kind of crazy. But if you think about it, this is a very top-notch, top-level position um, at the same table as a CEO. Um, so, they're gonna be paid well. So anyway, those are my top eight highest paying jobs for environmental science. If you are in pursuit of one of these jobs right now, I wish you the best of luck. There are some really exciting jobs out there and I just wanted to mention again that these are definitely not the only options for well-paid jobs within the world of environmental science. There's many out there. These are just the most prevalent that just kept coming up over and over again and also the most popular. So definitely don't feel confined to this. But if you are in pursuit of protecting the environment and money is your primary objective, I think that you're going to find the more that you chase the money, um, the less fulfilled that you're going to be. I think that there are some really, really fulfilling jobs out there that um, definitely pay a bit less, but um, can end up being the happiest option for you. So anyway, hope you all enjoyed this video. Hope you found it valuable and please leave me comments below with what you think, what your thoughts are. Um, if you have any requests for future videos, let me know. But anyway, have a wonderful day and best of luck if you are in pursuit of one of these jobs right now.